Hey everyone, it's great to connect with you again today. This Sunday we'll be outdoors at 845, indoors and streaming at 11. This coming Sunday is the fourth and last Sunday of Advent. So we will be lighting the Advent candles and turning our thoughts to Joseph and the angel who visits him, recorded in Matthew 1. It's Advent in a nursery. There's no Sunday school the next four weeks, but this Sunday at 945, we are hosting a baptism service in the sanctuary. There are nine people who are planning to be baptized, and your support of them at this significant moment of their lives would be greatly appreciated. In addition, this Sunday at 4 o'clock, we will gather in the church parking lot for our annual carol sing. We will sing your favorite Christmas carols, and then afterwards we'll have items to make s'mores, and hot drinks will also be available. And Christmas Eve is just a little over a week away. We will have Christmas Eve services outdoors at 4 and indoors and streaming at 6. There's something about things that happen around Christmas. Some of the best stories that take place, take place around Christmas. I want to share one such story with you that I read many years ago. It was 11 p.m. Christmas Eve of 1949. Elizabeth English and her husband Herman finally locked their store and dragged themselves home exhausted. Theirs was one of those big old general appliance stores that sold everything from refrigerators and toasters and record players to bicycles and dollhouses and games. They sold almost all their toys and all of the layaways except one package had been picked up. Usually they kept the store open until everything had been picked up. They would feel terrible on Christmas morning knowing that some little child's gift was back in the layaway shelf. But the person who had put a dollar down on that package never appeared. Early Christmas morning, they opened their gifts with their 12-year-old son, Tom. But there was something very lifeless about this Christmas. After breakfast, Tom went to visit his friend. Herman went back to bed. And Elizabeth stood at the sink doing the dishes, feeling let down. It was nearly 9 a.m. and sleet mixed with snow cut the air outside. The wind rattled their windows and she felt grateful for the warmth of the apartment. Sure glad I don't have to go out on a day like today, she thought to herself. And then it began. Something she'd never experienced before. A strange, persistent urge. Go to the store, it seemed to say. She looked at the icy sidewalk outside. That's crazy, she said to herself. She tried dismissing the thought, but it wouldn't leave her alone. Go to the store. Well, she wasn't going to go. She'd never gone to the store on Christmas Day in all the 10 years that they'd owned their store. In those days, no one did. There wasn't any reason to go. She didn't want to go, and she wasn't going to. For an hour, she fought that strange feeling. Finally, she couldn't stand it any longer, and she got dressed. Herman, she said, feeling a little silly, I think I'll walk down to the store. Whatever for? Oh, I don't know. I just think I'll wander down. She put on her warmest clothes, but once outside, it didn't seem to help. The wind cut right through her, and the sleet stung her cheeks. She groped her way along the mile trip, slipping and sliding all the way. She felt ridiculous. She had no business being out in that weather. There was the store just ahead. The sign announced radio, electronic sales and service, and the big glass windows jutted out onto the sidewalk. And then she noticed something. In front of the store stood two little boys huddled together, one maybe about nine, the other maybe about six. Here she comes, yelled the older one. See, I told you she would come. Two little boys, half frozen, the younger one's face wet with tears. But when he saw her, his eyes opened wide and his sobbing stopped. What are you two children doing out here in this freezing rain? Hurrying them into the store and turning up the heat. You should be at home on a day like this. They were poorly dressed, no hats or gloves, their shoes barely held together. She rubbed their small icy hands and got them up close to the heater. We've been waiting for you. They've been standing outside since nine o'clock. Why were you waiting for me? Well, my little brother Jimmy didn't get any Christmas. He touched Jimmy's shoulder. We want to buy some skates. That's what he wants. We have these three dollars. See, Miss Lady? She looked at the dollars in his hand. She looked at their expectant faces. And then she looked around the store. 
I'm sorry, but we've sold almost everything. We have no skate. And then her eyes caught sight of the layaway shelf with that one loan package. She tried to remember what was in it. Wait a minute. She walked over, picked up the package, unwrapped it, and miracle of miracles, there was a pair of skates. Jimmy reached for them. Lord, let them be his size, she prayed. And miracle added upon miracle, they were his size. When the older boy finished tying the laces on Jimmy's right foot and saw that the skate fit perfectly, he stood up and presented the three dollars to her. She said, no, I'm not going to take your money. I want you to have the skates and I want you to use your money to buy some gloves for your hands. Their eyes became like saucers. Their grins stretched wide. When she saw their joy, her own spirits began to rise as well. After the children warmed up, she turned down the heater and they walked out together. As she locked the door, she turned to the older brother and said, how lucky I happened to come along when I did. If you'd stood there much longer, you'd have frozen. But, but how did you boys know that I would come? His gaze was steady and he answered her softly. Oh, I knew you would come, he said, because I asked Jesus to send you. I know there's a lot going on in our lives right now. A lot going on in our world right now. But in the midst of all of it, maybe what we need most is the faith of a little child. Faith to believe that God is at work. Faith to sense the reality of God with us. Father, it's so easy for us to get sidetracked. Forgive us. Fill us with the faith of children that we might see you and trust you and find joy of life in you for ourselves and for others. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining me. Have a wonderful day.